Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at logarithmic functions. So first, we're going to look at what is called logarithmic form and exponential form and convert between the two different forms. We're going to use uh, logarithmic and exponential form so that we can evaluate logarithms, discuss logarithmic properties, and then in the next video, we'll look at how to graph logarithmic functions the domain of a log function, and then the common and natural logarithms. So logarithms have several important applications in the world around us. One of the applications involves using the common logarithm to measure how strong an earthquake is on the Richter scale. So we're going to get to that in the next video, but first we're going to start with the definition of a logarithmic function. So Keep in mind from the previous video that exponential functions are one-to-one, -one, or in other words, they pass the horizontal line test. So logarithmic functions turn out to be the inverse of an exponential function. So the inverse function of an exponential function with base b is called the logarithmic function also with base b. So the, the inverse of each other, and they also have base b in common. So the definition of a logarithmic function, the x must be greater than zero. So we'll get to that when we talk about domain of a logarithmic function. The base must be greater than zero, and the base cannot equal one. So that is consistent with the definition of, of exponential function. The base must be a positive number and not equal to one. Then y equals log base b of x is how you read that log base b when the base is always written as a subscript and then you have of x it's not log times x it's log of x so the function's name is log base b this is called a logarithmic expression So a logarithm is what's equal to y. You can convert this logarithmic expression to an equivalent exponential expression. So in other words, if log base b of x equals y, that is the exponent on the base b to give you x. That's how logarithms are are um, interpreted. They are the exponent on the base that gives you the x that's inside the logarithm. And this is called a logarithmic function base b. So you can replace the y with f of x for function notation. So these two forms, logarithmic form and exponential form, are two forms that say the exact same thing. The first is called logarithmic form. So log base b of x equals y, and b raised to the y exponent equals x. That is called exponential form. And there is a way to convert between the two. So if you have y equals log base b of x, let's say you start with a logarithmic form. You can take base b, raise it to the y exponent, and it must equal x. So raise to the power is this bottom arrow. So base b raised to the y power and it must equal x. That's the top arrow. And when you do that, when you write base b raised to the y equals x, then you get what's called exponential form. Keep in mind that the exponent is what the logarithm equals and the x is what's inside the logarithm. So uh, note the location of the base in, log, in the logarithmic form and the base in the exponential form. And notice that the exponent is what the logarithm equals. All right, so we're going to discuss how to convert between logarithmic form and exponential form in the next couple examples. So example one. 
convert each exponential form or a logarithmic form to an equivalent exponential form. So we're going to do several of these. One, number one, 4 equals log base 2 of 16. So this is, this is a true statement. Log base 2 of 16 equals 4. And that is because you can write this into an equivalent exponential form that states the same thing. Base 2 is a log of the logarithm, so base 2 exponential function raised to the fourth exponent, so exponent is 4, and it must equal 16. And that is true. 2 to the fourth power does equal 16. Number 2. 3 equals log base 5 of 125. So what would be the exponential form this time? Base 5 raised to the third exponent, or 3 as the exponent, and it must equal what's inside the logarithm, equals 125. And 5 raised to the third power is 125. So that's a true statement. Number 3. 2 equals log base 3 of x. So this time we're given a variable inside the logarithm. Let's see if we can actually determine the value of x by converting this logarithmic form to exponential form. 3 to the second power equals x. So it looks like x is equal to 9. For this statement to be equivalent. Number 4. x equals log base 6 of 216. So this time the variable is what the logarithm equals. We're going to evaluate the logarithm expression or the logarithmic form by converting to exponential form the same way. Base 6 raised to the x power equals 216. So what power of 6 is 216? Looks like you have to take 6 times 6 times 6, so the exponent must be 3. You have to multiply 6 with itself 3 times. So number 5, 2 equals log base x of 16. So this time the variable is located in the base. Let's see if we can find out what x is by converting to exponential form x is the base raised to the second power and the equation is equal to 16. So how would you solve for x? Take the square root on both sides and you'll get x equals plus or minus square root of 16 which is plus or minus 4. So x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. Now check your answers. There were some limitations on what the base could be for a logarithmic function. The base must be a positive number and not equal to 1. That means the base, which is what x is representing, cannot be negative 4. So it looks like x must be 4 only. So that's how you convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. Let's try example 2. This time we're going to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form. So number one is 5 to the fourth power is 625. So this is, a, this is a statement that involves exponents. So it's exponential form. Let's say the exact same but with logarithms. Base 5 exponential form, so log base 5, logarithmic form, of... 625, and keep in mind, the logarithm always equals the exponent in exponential form, because logarithms are an exponent. So log base 5 of 625 is equal to 4. That's the same statement as this exponential form. Number 2, 
the cube root of 8 equals 2. Now that is true. Now let's say the same thing, but with logarithms. Keep in mind that you can rewrite 8, or the cube root of 8, as 8 to the 1 third power. That way, now it looks more like an exponential form. And now, what would the logarithmic form be? Log base 8. What goes inside the parentheses? 2. And then the exponent is what the logarithm equals. So, log base 8 of 2 is equal to 1 third is this statement. Number 3. 5 to the negative 3 exponent equals 1 divided by 125. So converting this to logarithmic form, it would be log base 5 of 1 divided by 125 and the exponent is negative 3. So log base 5 of 1 divided by 125 is negative 3. That's all true. And then number 4. This time we're going to introduce a variable. So it's 13 squared equals x. So take this exponential form and convert it to logarithmic form, and we'll determine what x is. So x is equal to 169, 13 squared. It'd be log base 13, because that's the base for the exponential form of x equals 2. Or, if, now that we know what x is equal to, you could also write log base 13 of 169 is 2. And that is true. And then one more, number 5. How about x squared equals 16? If we solve the equation, we already did this earlier, we came up with x is equal to plus or minus 4. So x is equal to 4, or x equals negative 4. So let's see what happens if we convert to logarithmic form. It would be log base x of 16, and it equals 2, which is the exponent. And so x is equal to 4 or negative 4, but x is the base of the logarithm, and again, the base cannot be a negative number, or, x, or 1. So x must be 4, so this would be log base 4 of 16 is 2. So this gives you an idea of how to convert from exponential form to logarithmic form, and the first example is logarithmic form to exponential form. So let's see how we can actually use this idea to evaluate logarithms without using a calculator, a scientific or graphing calculator. So keep in mind that logarithms are just exponents. So we can evaluate logarithms by rewriting to exponential form. So let's do a few of these problems in example three. Evaluate the following logarithms without using a scientific or graphing calculator. Log base 10 of 100. So this is asking, what is the exponent, because that's what the logarithm equals, what is the exponent on 10, base 10, that would give you 100? It's not 10 times 10, because we're talking about exponents in terms of logarithms. So what's the exponent on the 10 that gives you 100? 2. Since 10 to the second power is 100. And that is a true statement. 10 squared equals 100, so the log must be equal to 2. Number 2. How about log base 2 of 64? So how many times, I mean, what's the exponent on the 2 to give you 64? It has to be 6, because 2 to the 6th is equal to 64. Number 3. Log base 3 
of 81. So what power of 3 would give you 81? 4. Since 3 to the 4th power is 81. A couple more. Number 4. How about 1 that's a fraction? Log base 5 of 1 divided by 25. So what's the power on 5 that would give you 1 25th? Well, if, the, if, the, if we want a fraction, that means we're going to need a negative exponent. And it's negative 2. Since 5 to the negative second is 1 divided by 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. Okay, number 5. Log base 13 of 13. So this is one that we're going to talk about in a second. This is what's called a logarithmic property. What is the power of on 13 to give you 13? 1. Since 13 raised to the first power is itself. And then one more property. How about log base 7 of 1? What's the exponent on 7 to give you 1? 0. 7 to the 0 power is 1. So we did six different problems involving evaluating logarithms, and we didn't need a calculator. All right, these last two problems, number 5 and 6 from example 3, introduces what's called logarithmic properties. Since logarithms are really um, exponents, we actually have these two properties. Log base b of b is 1. That is always going to be the case. If the base and what's inside the logarithm are the same number, then the answer will always be 1. The logarithm will always equal 1. Because, keep in mind, this is a logarithmic form. You can convert to exponential form. Base b raised to the first power is equal to b. And that's stated over here. Since b to the first power is always b, if the base and what's inside the logarithm are the same, it will always be 1. Log base b of 1 is 0. That's because if we convert to exponential form, it would be base b to the 0 power equals 1. And that's always true. It doesn't matter what the base is, as long as the base is not 0, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So this gives us two logarithmic properties. And again, let's try example 4 without using the calculator. Log base 8 of 8. This should be really quick now. This is property number 1. If the base and what's inside the logarithm are the same number, this is 1. And that's because 8 to the first power is 8. Number 2. How about log base 10 of 1? So this is the second property. If the base is b, so the base is 10, and inside the logarithm is a 1, it's 0. Because 10 to the 0 power is 1. Number 3. How about log base 10 of 10? What's the power on 10 that gives you 10? 1. And number 4, log base pi of 1. So the base is pi, and what's inside the logarithm is a 1, so that is 0. Since if you take the number pi, raise it to the zero power, it's 1. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the properties involving logarithms. Now that we're familiar with the logarithmic functions and some of the notation, we can now understand the relationship, the inverse relationship, between logarithms and exponential functions. So if we understand these two inverse properties, then example 5 will be a breeze. 
the base must be positive and the base cannot be 1. That's because of exponential functions have an inverse and logarithm functions have an inverse. Log base b of b raised to the x power is just simply x. That's because the log base b and is a logarithm and b to the x is an exponential function and they are inverses of each other. So log base b, exponential function base b to the x is just x. And on the other hand, base b, so that's an exponential function, to the log base b, that's a logarithm function with the same base, so they're inverses, of x is just x. So let's try these two properties out. So example 5. 8 raised to the log base 8 of 7. So this is talking about property number 2. Base 8, log base 8, and that's the exponent. So this is 7. Number 2. Log base 5 of 5 to the 4th power. So this is property number 1. Log base 5, and then the exponential function is also base 5 inside the logarithm. So they're inverses, and you just get 4. Number 3. Log base 10 of 10 to the 18th power. 18, because it's log base 10, exponential function base 10. Number 4. 10 to the log base 10 of square root of 2. Same reason, base 10 exponential function, base 10 logarithm, square root of 2. Number 5. Log base 3 of log base 7 of 7. So a logarithm within a logarithm. Let's work on the logarithm on the innermost. So log base 7 of 7. That was a property that we were just discussing in the previous example. That's equal to 1. Now what's log base 3 of 1? 0. And that's also a property from the previous example. And then one more. How about 10 to the log base 10 of 33? Base 10 exponential function, base 10 logarithm, so 33. So we have four properties involved logarithms so far. The two inverse properties, and then we also have the properties involving uh, the bases are the same, or the base is the same as what's inside the logarithm, that's equal to 1. And log base anything of 1 is 0. Those are the four log properties we have thus far. So this will be a good place to stop. In the next video, we're going to look at graphs of logarithmic functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples that we did today in the video, using exponential form or logarithmic form or any of these four properties involving logarithms, please let me know. And let me know if you have any questions while you work on the homework as well. And I'll see you at the next video.